Right. This I'm really looking forward to. So we've got the KTM Super Duke R1290 V Twin for a bit of a blast today. Oh my god, I've been so looking forward to this. So, welcome back to the channel. As you saw, 1290 Super Duke car. This out of all the uh, Super Naked for the Road episodes that I've done is the one I've been looking forward to the most. Whoa, holy shit. I, um, just going on, on the initial, you know, looks alone and staring at this thing in the magazine. This is probably my favourite looking. It's not quite as pretty as the um, Street Fighter, but it's just got something about it. So same, uh, same MO as my other videos, uh, not a review, it's literally just me taking this out of the uh, showroom for a bit of a ride, give you my first impressions as I try and figure out which one of these I want to buy. Um, initial impressions like feels uh, sort of agile and similar to the Street Fighter. A little bit wider and uh, chunkier, maybe. Um, oh, V Twin Jesus, you can feel that power though. Holy shit. Oh my god, it's got more low down grunt than the Ducati. I can tell that in 15 seconds of riding it. First impressions, I said, low down grunt, unbelievable. Um, more low down grunt than Ducati. Feels a bit bigger and bulkier. Uh, but I guess that V twin gives you that uh, that real low down power. Um, Ducati felt quite quite top endy actually for a, such a big engine. Um, anyway, I'm not talking about the Ducati. So the looks of this thing, I mean, I love them. Say what you like, some do, some don't. It's a bit more my, I'll, I'll probably grant you that. But I love them. Um, screen's really nice. Uh, I'm in sport mode at the minute. Um, so it's sport, street and race, but apparently you can unlock more modes if you pay extra. <laughs> Same with the quick shift. There's no quick shifter or auto blipper on this, but if you pay for an option, you can unlock that from the dealership. It's like 800 quid for a track pack, um, which includes all sorts of um, most likely unnecessary gubbins. Google it. Um, the sound of it, 
Whoa. This has obviously just got a standard exhaust on straight out of the factory, but it sounds beautiful. Um, I've never, fun fact today, I don't think I've ever ridden uh, a V-twin. Ever. No. Christ. You, you just touch the throttle there in second gear and I could just feel the front end just start to lift, just skip a touch. And I, and I mean, I, I tickled it in traffic, which is hilarious. Feels quite easy to turn. So I don't know too much about this bike other than what you... Uh, Other than what you can read yourselves, um, I've never had a KTM before, never ridden one before, but it feels actually, um, it doesn't feel quite as premium as a Ducati, but not far off. The screen's really nice and modern and slick. Um, if you want to watch the, the other videos, they're up here, but um, comparatively to the Tuono, uh, it's probably on par with a Tuono from a premium feel, definitely more premium than the ZX2. I just felt like a plastic, uh, plasticky, I don't know, I'm not mean, but it, it was a bit plasticky. Um, all the switch gear looks really nice and premium, um, again, similar to the Tuono really. Ducati obviously was a, 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 a touch of a step up, but, um, you know, you pay for that. Oh my god, you can feel that power. The front end's just wanting to be twitchy. Brakes feel nice. I, I always never get that. Like, you see brakes feel nice, like of course they fucking do. It's a 2020 expensive bike. What they get what are you they're gonna feel like? Uh why should I go here? Well, I'll go down the A road for a bit I think. Oh it sounds so cool. Mirrors are good, usable. Not like I'm on the Aprilia. Although there's no oil blip though, the gearbox feels nice. Feels slick. I'm gonna have to get used to blipping myself again. Good God. Might be in medieval times. <laughs> so what do you guys think about the looks of it? I get it. it from what I see online, it gets either like love it or hate it reactions. I personally love it. I think it's awesome. Um, I actually like this colour, the black. I don't think the black looks nicer than the um, the white one. It just makes the orange pop a bit more, I think, in my opinion. But what do I know? Um, I always go a bit quiet in the start of these videos because I'm just trying to process uh, all the information about how this bike's actually making me feel. I saw one of these at Cadwell Park on Monday um, uh, in the intermediate group, I think it was, and it, it was like uh, some guy had done some stuff to it and modified it, but uh, it looked badass, and it sounded even more badass. Um, and you know, he was hanging, he was hanging in the in the in the um, group. I saw him going over the mountain. I might have even put some footage in the latest blog, actually. In fact, I'm sure I've got. The slow mo of the of it wheeling um, into all bends. All right. Well, you're doing a U-turn on it's easy enough. There's a big turning circle for anyone who gives a shit about the turning circle on a Super Duke car. <laughs> It's not going to be on many people's uh, list of tick boxes when looking at a bike like this, but there you go. Real world reviews from this channel. <laughs> so comfort wise, uh, I'm just cruising around now, super, super comfortable, soaking up the bumps. Uh, I'll play with the modes in a bit. Um, feels reasonably firm, but not like bone rattling firm. Cross, down, street. Right, it's in street now. I don't think there are electronic suspension on these, so I guess that's just going to adjust the um, 
the throttle uh, aggressiveness. Right, third gear. Holy shit! Fucking hell! That's got some grunt! Wow! My goodness! That's fast! <laughs> feels, feels more intense uh, Feels more intense than the um, Street Fighter I'll tell you that straight away More, more aggressive and oh. Yeah, more aggressive and a bit more intense um, that thing was smooth though, to be fair that thing felt smooth, it felt refined, it felt nice, I really like the Street Fighter. Um, this this has got big uh, big shoes to fill, being honest. But so far so good, quick 10 minutes, let's see um, let's see how we get on on some open, more open roads in a minute. One thing I can tell you though, sat here at traffic lights and just cruising through 30 mile an hour zones and through centre of Nottingham as I've done today. Um, it's quite civilised, it's pretty easy to ride just cruising around for a big V-twin like this, you know, I think uh, my V4 um, that does not like uh, cruising around town, but this has got a nice light clutch it's not chugging at low revs yeah, it's okay it's comfortable as well, I mean look, you, the, the seating riding position is lovely you could do some big miles on this um, as all these Super Nates you can actually, I mean look the ZH2 actually was probably the most comfortable if I'm honest um, but it's always a trade off isn't it as to what you want um, what do you actually want from the bike for me the comfort is a bit of it a, a fairly big bit for this bike actually but the excitement factor um, and the handling is, is an even bigger bit I have to say the noise and the rumbles of this thing though certainly gives you that excitement factor. I can tell you that now. You can feel the um, you can feel the wind blowing through the front end a bit. It feels a bit twitchy on the front. I don't know if that's just the wind or Let's, let me show you some bends and see. Um, See how it felt. Oh, the low down power. Phenomenal. Now that feels okay. It's just not quite as uh, easy to turn as what I'm used to on my RSV4. It felt okay in them fast sweepers though. I just thought, thought it was a little bit, look at this here, look, it's just a bit feels a little bit unsteady that's probably me I mean it's fast it's stupid fast what it feels like in comparison to the Ducati which is just sort of being honest the main competitor it feels um, it's not as fast as the Tuono it doesn't feel like that to me uh, it feels the low down first initial grunt feels faster but then it feels like the Ducati's got more at the top uh, the Tuono felt faster than all of them actually, to be fair, but that's not the main criteria, but that, that initial grunt power, uh, it makes it feel like really aggressive, it's got an aggressive power delivery and it's only in road mode at the minute, um, in fact if we put it into sport, right it's in sport now, let's see what difference that makes, if I can tell, sometimes you don't actually get much discernible difference. You know, from <laughs> I miss a quick shifter though. I have to option that and the auto blipper. I do miss that. I know it's kind of like first world problems and all, but I definitely miss that. If you buy one of these, you, you've got to pay that money and, and unlock it. As annoying as it is, I think it still keeps it. It's still a fair bit cheaper than the Street Fighter though, which is again is a not the only consideration but it's always got to be a consideration yeah they've done that thing where they lay roads by not actually laying roads but just throwing a load of gravel on the road I'm not sure which half wit thought that was a great idea 
I can feel the gravel pinging up off this uh, car's wheels in front of me now. Fucking idiots. They just chuck gravel down on the road and just hope for the best. They put some white lines on, oh that'll be alright. Excellent road lane from uh, Nottinghamshire Council there. Let alone the skid risk. I could not be more lost by the way. Fucking hell, the front wheel is just hovering even at like, I'm not even half throttle there. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know this is a bit too nuts. But what I'm trying to achieve with this process is getting a, a, a less focused uh, bike for the road that's easier to ride, more comfortable, but fun as well. And I think this is just sort of going uh, a bit too far. The other thing as well, um, not to be negative, uh, in fact I'll go this way, not to be negative but the front end feels, definitely does feel not quite right. We're coming straight off the Street Fighter, it feels not as uh, planted. It definitely feels a bit twitchier, the whole bike just sort of is, is vibrating and aggressive and brutal and feels twitchy and just not quite refined uh, but some people might want that you know I might want that <laughs> holy shit woohoo why do you always end up behind a car on a set of cool bends yeah it tips in all right but it just feels a bit there's no front end feeling, I can't, I'm not, it's not giving me any confidence. I don't know if that's the difference between the old ones on the Ducati and the, uh, I think it's WP on these. It just feels like a, it's just, unstable's not fair. It just feels like there's a slight twitchiness from the front end here. strange because that Ducati felt more agile but more stable at the same time which you would sort of ordinarily think would be the other way around or counterproductive but it's just not oh my god that fuck the front wheel just hovers in uh, second gear on, the, on like minimal throttle <laughs> You'd be just wheeling this everywhere if you wanted to. Yeah, so going down these um, sort of sweeper faster roads, it's always just sort of twitching a bit at the front end. It's completely different to the other three. And I don't know why. Yeah, I, I, I'm not loving it. I'm not loving it at the front end, I'm going to be honest with you. Not loving it at all. Let's see what this corner's like. Reasonable speed. Yeah, I mean, it's okay once you're in it. It just feels a little bit twitchy. Whatever it is, it's hard for me to articulate, but it's not filling me with confidence at this point, if I'm honest. Um, not like that Ducati did, to be honest, I don't know. I'm, a, I'm quite a big believer in sort of, you know, I wouldn't say love at first sight, but you get where I'm coming from, like initial gut instinct on things. And before I rode it, I was like, wow, I love that KTM. But I watched a lot of reviews, and I was like, yeah, it's probably definitely gonna be the bike that I'm gonna buy. Probably, definitely. <laughs> Um, and then I rode the Ducati and I, I didn't expect to love that as much after the V4S um, because I didn't really like that V4S too much, I thought that was just far too much and far too intense um, but actually the Street Fighter guys 
of that V4 is probably the sweet spot for that bike. It's not too, uh, like this, the low down power on this is just a, it's quite intense and brutal and aggressive, whereas on the V4 it, it gave you that chance to build. Maybe that's the V-twin characteristics coming through, but it, it, it did feel like it built a bit more progressively and a bit more smoothly. Some people might think I'm talking shit and might want it to be brutal and that's what this bike's all about and one thing or another, but that's not, that's not what I want it to be about. I want it to be a, a blend, an all-rounder, you know, a mixture of everything and it, if it's something I'm going to have for a while, then maybe paying that bit extra for something premium, um, other than those wings, <laughs> is the move. But yeah, this feels, in the bends it feels alright, but it's just twitchy getting into them somehow. I'm not the best person to give reviews on bikes. It just doesn't fill me with any confidence in the, from the front end. I need to realise the V-twin, I don't need to change gears like that. It's so fast though. But it kind of feels like it runs out of puff. Put this in third now. Yeah, look, the front end is sort of weaving in like fourth gear, like, uh, uh, not a mad speed. I wouldn't take this on a racetrack. Fuck that, not down the straights. Jesus. Yeah, that's put me off. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be blunt, this put me off. The, the handling of this bike is a weak spot in my opinion. Everything else is pretty strong, but the, uh, the handling of it is just not a confidence inspiring machine at all. I'm trying to give it a chance because I really want to love this. But I, I don't think I do. So let's try and uh, sum this up then. What am I, uh, what am I thinking? So good points. Uh, engine, clearly the engine is mental. All low down though, there's a lot of low down power, it does feel like it runs out of puff a bit. I mean this is all relative by the way. Uh, in comparison to something like the ZH2 or the Tuono or the Street Fighter even. The power's low down which is nice in certain circumstances. The noise is phenomenal. Um, suspension feels pretty nice, feels pretty plush. Uh, riding around town, uh, it's actually really civilised. <laughs> it's actually decent riding around town. Um, not not a pain in the arse at all. It's comfortable. I like the looks of it. What I don't like, um, the main thing is that the, the the front end just does not have any feeling in it. I, I can't put my finger on it. The Ducati felt solid and planted, but yet still nimble and agile. Whereas this um, this just feels twitchy, even at fairly low speeds, doing fairly innocuous things. The front end's just sort of got a bit of a shimmy on it and just doesn't feel quite right to me, it doesn't feel connected and when you're in the corner it's stable enough but you have no real idea what's going on. Um, whereas again on some of the other bikes that I've ridden, I mean even the ZH2 actually was pretty nice in the sweepers although it was pretty soft. Um, sport mode, uh, street mode, the throttle's a bit too aggressive to be honest in sport mode, be alright for the track I'm sure. But again you know, other than a, a, a giggle, you, taking this to a track's not the point of it. Um, but look, all that summary aside, we've got a gearbox, gearbox is nice, needs an auto, auto blipper and a quick shifter, but the gearbox is um, is nice enough. Um, it feels mid-premium, whereas the Ducati would be premium, shall we say. Uh, ZX2 would be the other end, would be a bit more budget, nothing wrong with that, I'm not slacking it off, I'm just speaking the truth. Kawasaki riders do not like it when you call ZH2 is cheap, by the way. Um, they get very cross. Anyway, um, it'd be slightly more budget, shall we be polite. Uh, the Tuono and this sort of sit together, I think. The Tuono, maybe, I don't know. A bit more modern, maybe. Um, the, the Ducati's clearly premium. Uh, the cost of this is is fairly expensive for what it is, and then you add another grand on for your track pack and bits and bobs that you have to add on. Um, so it takes you quite close to Ducati actually, only a grand or two away. Um, which in the grand scheme of things is not that much um, when you're paying this much for a bike. Uh, what else? 
Uh, yeah, I said around town. So yeah, look, my, my thing with buying a bike, this isn't a review, this is me choosing to buy a bike, right? So that's the point. And my main thing when I do that is the gut feel. How does this actually make me feel when I get on it? You know, what? Um, what's my gut instincts telling me about this bike? And honestly, the first five minutes I thought, no, I don't like it. After an hour or so riding it, I feel exactly the same. Uh, the main thing is it doesn't make me smile like the Ducati and it doesn't give me, certainly doesn't give me the confidence that the Ducati has uh, or, or gives me to chuck it into the bends and it's just got a weird twitchy front end and it's uh, it's ruined it if I'm honest um, I love the brand, I love the bike, I think it sounds amazing but that um, twitchy front end um, yeah yeah, unfortunately, in summary, my decision is this isn't for me. So I've got a test ride on the Triumph as a bit of a wild card shortly. So I'm going to try that Triumph. But, but at the minute, being blunt, the Ducati sits in the super naked bracket for me. For what I've tested, the Ducati sits head and shoulders, um, frankly. But then again, you know, it's a head and shoulders price, so there's decisions to be made. So, yeah. Look, um, I hope you found this interesting. Um, just an idiot riding around trying to decide which unnecessary bike to buy. Um, if you did, if you could leave me a like and a subscription, and if you hit the notification bell, it'll let you know when I post new videos on the channel. Um, but yeah, other than that, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate all your support lately uh, and throughout, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.